We're back on the Lobo Basketball pregame show at the Event Center in San Jose. New Mexico has come to the Bay Area to take on the Spartans. San Jose State is a team, Coach Patino, that has done really well through its first five games. They just don't have wins to show for it. We're courtside with Lobo head coach Rich Patino. Uh, this is a dangerous team, isn't it? Four of their five games have come down to the last second. Uh, they get blocked at the buzzer versus San Diego State. They had a wide open layup to send it to overtime. They win at the buzzer versus Air Force. They lose at the buzzer Fresno State. Uh, they lose at the buzzer Wyoming. And then Boise State game was a pretty good game until the end. So we have a high level of respect for this program. Um, they've got some good players. They shoot a ton of threes. Uh, so we know it's going to be a very challenging game. I know you have a lot of respect for your good friend Tim Miles, too, their head coach. Uh, they have four guys in their starting lineup that they rely on a ton, all playing 30-plus minutes. All really good players? Yeah, and, and, and veteran guys, you know, who have been in this program. Uh, Cardenas is as good of a point guard in this league. Amy, who missed some time last year, is very, very talented. To bet Gorner, I don't know if there's the most improved award in our league, but he would win that. Uh, he's really gotten a lot better. Trey Anderson's a solid veteran. Um, you know, so their record, they don't like their record, of course, but it could be a lot different if a couple of bounces go their way. So <coughs> we've got to defend our butt off uh, because it's going to be offensively for them. They are very, very talented. They look a little bit different on the post. What about their new big, Jong? Yeah, I mean, he's different. I mean, Robert Viola gets hurt um, out for the season. Terrific player. Really hurt us in the past. So he's an athletic type of guy. They lost another kid to a transfer to Central Florida. Um, but very, very bouncy. Um, can block shots. Very athletic at the rim. You're right about Viola. Definite loss for them and someone that your assistant, Coach Felton, knows very well from Fresno State. We have Liberal head coach Richard Bettino alongside. New Mexico has San Jose State at the event center. What about this venue, Coach? It's pretty unique. You guys just come from a unique venue, Clune Arena, where you played extremely well. It's tough to play here, isn't it? Well, unique's a nice way to put it. I mean, they just don't get very good <laughs> fan support. You know, I mean, I, it, this community should support their team. I mean, Coach Miles is doing great things. So they don't get a lot of fans. Um, so it'll be different than Air Force. Air Force felt like a home game for us in a lot of ways, where uh, this game... Sometimes when the, the home team is used to playing in front of no fans, it can be an advantage to them. So uh, hopefully our guys, they were great last year in this venue. Uh, hopefully the guys that have been here before can talk about that and understand that. Great point. You've had two visits to the event center prior. You lost two years ago, and then you dominated them last year. Uh, I recall a couple of years ago, you guys couldn't make a bucket. Both House and Mash had difficult shooting days, but it seemed like everything went in last year. I only remember last year. I don't remember two years ago. Um, yeah, you know, we, play, we played well, and they were a good team last year. So uh, we'll see. Every year is different. You know, you, you, you watch the film, but how much can you truly take from it? I don't know. They've got different players. We've got different players. So uh, let's just compete our butts off. Every single one of these games, they're very, very challenging. You know, Air Force, we played really well. Air Force goes and blows out a talented UNLV team. So you never, ever know. Every game's a one-game Super Bowl. You make a great point, too, about it. It's so different from year to year. Amari Moore is gone. He had a triple-double in that game two years ago. We have local head coach Richard Bettino here at the event center in San Jose. So what's most important for you against them defensively? How do you think Coach Miles' team might guard you this year? Yeah, I mean, they play a little bit of 1-3-1. They've always had that because they're a tall team, so they've got good length. Um, we got to be able to confidently attack that. We did a great job last year when they did that. We hit like four threes in a row off it. Um, but other than that, it's it's somewhat standard. You know, I mean, I think they have offensively definitely been better than they have defensively. You know, so we've got to play our game. Um, we've got to be able to, if they do score, they do hit a three, play with some pace. I mean, we're obviously playing some of the fastest pace in the country. A little bit of that is we get a lot of steals and we convert those into kind of what we call pick sixes. Um, but more than anything, just... You have to respond with, with good looks. And I think over the last two games, we've shot over 50% from the field. So hopefully that continues. Is that a testament to just really good shot selection or the defense creating great shots offensively? A little bit of both. You know, if you get steals, you're normally going to convert off it because you're going to have an unbalanced floor. Uh, but what we've done a good job of is Utah State. We went to Nelly. 
Air Force who went to JT. Those guys are shooting high percentage shots. So um, continue to take what the defense gives us. JT Toppin, you're a fabulous freshman, six times now Mountain West Freshman of the Year. We've talked about it. One of the best players in the conference, not just freshman. Why has he been so good in his first year at D1? <laughs> just been, excuse me, just been very productive. You know, I mean, he's shooting 67% from the field. It's obviously an amazing number. Um, he's rebounding the ball very, very well. He's blocking shots very well. He is scoring one-on-one -on -one in the post uh, at a high level. So, you know, I mean, it's just um, sometimes freshmen aren't as productive as he is. And I think once his body continues to develop and just an understanding of offensively, defensively, terminology, all those things, uh, he could be pretty special. Follow up on Nelly Jr. Joseph had the great outing against Utah State offensively, his best game offensively as a Lobo, not as good against Air Force. You'd love to see consistency there, but you have so many options. It's not going to be the same guys every night, but how does he become more consistently a threat down there? I don't think he's been necessarily inconsistent. I don't think he played well versus Air Force at all. Uh, some of that was the system. You know, he's not banging guys, hitting guys. It was more of a four to five out, guarding back cuts. And the elevation, I thought, actually bothered him. I thought it bothered JT, although he played really well. Uh, so I think he'll bounce back tonight and be much better. But we'd like a balance. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get Utah State every night, but um, we certainly would welcome uh, him with production down low and we're continuing to work on it with him. You mentioned that San Jose State shoots a ton of threes. Obviously they shoot it pretty well to about 36% as a team. How do you guard them and how do they like to get their threes? I mean sense of urgency more than anything to have a hand up, challenge the shot, um, try to take away the attempt. You know if they're taking a lot they're probably going to make a lot. Uh, I mean last game versus Fresno they made 17 threes. That's remarkable. We have made 17 threes total all season. Um, so sense of urgency of, of where they're getting them. And then they love to get in the paint and kick out. Cardenas is really, really good at getting in there, playing off the two feet. And those guys, they've got four guys at almost all times who can shoot it even five at times. So that's definitely their bread and butter. I think especially as they had some injuries of what they're trying to do. And it's been very, very productive. What kind of player is Amy? He played fewer than a dozen games last year for them. Talented, just like Tibet Gordner, just like their guards can, can fill up the stat sheet. So a uh, very good athlete, plays hard, good speed, good toughness. It can make some shots. On the subject of the three, you've said that you'd like to see your team take more, take good shots and make more. How is that coming along? Not very good. Um, you know, but the good part is we're putting up a lot of numbers. You know, I mean, we're 99 two points ago in the 80s for Air Force. So work in progress. Those guys got to be ready to shoot them, you know, so. Uh, I don't want them forcing taking bad shots, but it's, it's certainly a, a key part of what everybody's trying to do offensively. Well, Coach, back in the top 25, at 25 for the first time this season, both AP and Coach's poll, a nice three-game winning streak. Best of luck keeping it going here tonight against San Jose State. All right, thank you. Lobo head coach Richard Patino alongside pregame. We're back after this timeout. It's Lobo Basketball on the UNM Sports Radio Network. Final score at the event center on the campus of San Jose State University. The Lobos, 95. The Spartans, 75. New Mexico wins its fourth consecutive Mountain West game. And the Lobo roll continues. In fact, it's the fourth in a row by double figures. First time in 12 years they've won four straight by 10 or more in league contests. Lobos improved to 17-3 and three overall. 5-2 and two in the Mountain West. San Jose State now 8-11 and 11 on the year. And they dip to one and five in conference play. The post game show brought to you by the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino, winning entertainment including Samblecast Racing, Live Music, Downing the Best Games, and more. That's the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino. Final numbers for you: the Lobos for the game shoot 48 percent from the field. Excuse me, 51 percent from the field. The Spartans shoot 48 percent from the floor. The Lobos from three point land for the ball game shoot five of nine 56 percent from the arc solid work from the first half and six of nine in the second half they finish at 10 of 19 from long range the lobos will lament some points lost at the free throw line they finish up 17 out of 26 from the charity stripe that's 65 percent in the contest UNM leaves nine points at the line Again, 10 out of 19 from three-point land. The Lobos shoot 53% from the floor. And San Jose State for the game finishes 
37% from three, 10 out of 27. 48% from the floor, 30 out of 63. Santa Jose State shoots just five free throws. They make them all, five for five from the line. Lobos turned over San Jose State 18 times, scored 25 points off of those. The Spartans, just six turnovers created, and they only get four points from them. Paint points battle, 38-38, dead even. Lobos won it by eight first half, Spartans won it by eight in the second. Second chance points, Lobos 16 to nine, fast break points, New Mexico 21, San Jose State three. Bench points, Lobos 19, San Jose State 17. New Mexico had an 11 point edge, at halftime and win it going away by 20, 95 to 75 is the final. Okay, we'll take our first pregame, uh, excuse me, postgame break. When we come back on the other side, we'll get you some individual numbers from the contest and we'll hear from Lobo head coach Richard Putino. That's still to come from the event center at San Jose State University. Lobo's 95, Spartan 75 on the UNM Sports Radio Network. Welcome back inside the event center at San Jose State University. We're post game. The post game show is brought to you by the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino. Winning entertainment, including simulcast racing, live music, dining, the best games, and more. That's the Albuquerque Downs Racetrack and Casino. The Lobos knock off the host Spartans. New Mexico 95, San Jose State 75. We're joined courtside by one of the Lobos stars, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Third year Lobo, congratulations, Mash. Thank you. Nice win for your team. Way to go, bud. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Always feels good to get a win. Always. You guys did a lot of good things in this one, and Hunter talked about it in the second half. It felt like when you needed to make that run after they got it down to single digits, it was the defense that got it done. Absolutely. I mean, that's been our main focus all year is just getting stops and just letting our offense just just come and let it let it, let it come to us and not force anything because, you know, in years past, you know, we, we've gotten stagnant on offense and we let it let it, you know, get to our defense. But this year, man, we're, we're all focused on that defensive end, man. No matter what happens on the offensive end, missed shot, uh, turnover, we, we, we want to get a stop. So that, that's what we're focused on. Mash, I, you know, one of the things I, I noticed this year, last year you led the team in the conference in scoring. Mm -hmm. This year you're kind of taking a step back and letting your teammates, being very unselfish on the offensive end, mm -hmm. but really dedicating yourself on the defensive end yes. um it is and i saw that in a timeout where i think you and house were having words with nelly about just the high ball screen defense yes and yes. it was all good because it was all about defense mm -hmm. all about defense yeah i'm glad you brought that uh that moment with me and Nelly in, uh, in house, you know, because we're always trying to just, you know, work off each other and just learn from each other. Um, you know, I, there were some things I needed to correct on the, on the pick and roll defensive side, and Nelly was able to come and correct me, and we communicate. That's how we, you know, that's what a team is all about, and I love with these group of guys. We, we communicate with each other. You know, we're open and honest, and, and we're able to have those tough conversations when, when we, get, we need to win these tough games. So I, That's so awesome to hear that because I said to Hunter that what I saw was a good animated discussion you guys it started over at the foul line before he even shot the free throws yes. you were talking yes. about it yes. it was all five of you first mm -hmm. and then the three of you standing behind the the, the foul circle talking about it yeah and it continued during the timeout after coach subbed in all the subs and they're sitting and, and listening to coach you guys continued and it looked like you all had an idea about what was going on mm -hmm. and after nelly explained it you tapped him on the chest you clapped you said way to go big man i yeah. got you that makes sense it was mm -hmm. kind of like it all became clear to everybody absolutely absolutely i mean we we're gonna you know we're human we're all gonna make mistakes and we're all gonna um you know want to be well this is an anxious game so we all want to play well but uh you know that that, that connectivity and uh, that spirit of the team is is there with us i mean we 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 we, we all want to be so clear and and so uh clear about what we're doing and how we want to go about winning games and you know because we think we got a really championship level team so um we're just going to keep exuding that and keep keep best being leadership that. bro that's you showing leadership and your maturity i, I think that. you could you could sense that on this team i appreciate that thank you man i appreciate that i sense a, a growth in all of you yeah. like there's a there's an unselfish way about how you guys are um approaching all the options that you have mm -hmm. like it you look at the box score and each night it looks like it's someone different mm -hmm. having a night and i think that you all have had to make a little sacrifice to make that happen and everybody looks completely bought into it absolutely everybody's 100 percent bought into it 100 percent. i mean we 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 said it from the jump from summer from training camp i mean we we we, we know we got a special group um and we we had a special group last year but we weren't able to execute down the stretch and we know that so um, you know, we know the things that we need to correct and we needed to correct from last year and we're just gonna keep building we're just gonna keep building keep getting better 
So let me share this this stat with you because Hunter and I talked about it, and and I suggested it during the game. And it's one of those things, you know, the uh, the spaghetti, right? If you keep throwing it, eventually something's going to stick. Mm-hmm. And I, I I dug into your field goal attempts mm-hmm. this year. Thirty one percent of your field goal attempts coming into tonight this year were three point attempts. Mm-hmm. Last year for the entire season, just twenty two percent were three pointers. Yeah. Um, you're getting more looks. I think it's it's because of what the defense is giving you. But I said to Hunter, you know, the mid range is the bread and butter. That's where Match is going to make his money. Mm-hmm. The threes in the offense, rhythm, catch and shoot, whatever, great. But I'd love to see Mash get back to who he is and what he does. You did it tonight. So efficient. Yeah. Seven for eleven from the floor, and you mixed in two three balls because I felt like they just kind of came to you. What yeah. did you see out there tonight? Man, I mean. Uh well, first of all, I just I'm just blessed to first of all just be playing right now. Um, I, I I dealt with a, a a pretty bad thumb injury that that on my shooting hand, and I tried to play through it. And um, you know, I think a higher source kind of just let me you know needed me to sit down for a little bit. So I'm just blessed to be out there and playing. But told you take just, a break. Yeah, it's all, yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't gonna take a break. I, I, I wasn't. I was telling everybody I'll wrap the thumb. I'll put whatever I need on it so I can play. But I mean. I know I got bigger things in store. I need to keep my body healthy and stuff. So, but I'm just blessed to be out there playing and at a high level. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm able to shoot the ball efficiently tonight. And uh, I just want to keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Yeah. So is that you're basically just taking what the defense gives you? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah definitely. Definitely. All right, yeah. Nash. Way to go! Congratulations. Thank Outstanding you. performance and uh, four in a row in the league. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Twelve years since the Lobos have won four straight Mountain West games by double digits. Damn, How about we, that? We're gonna keep making history. Love That's it. what we're gonna do. Yeah, love it. Nevada yeah. on Sunday. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a good one. It's <laughs> gonna be a good one. Very good one. Thank y'all, All man. Right. I appreciate y'all. Jamal Mashburn Jr. post game. Lobos a winner. Ninety five to seventy five here at the event center at San Jose State. Big night for Mash, big night for the Lobos. Lobos five and double figures. New Mexico wins it by 20. We're joined courtside postgame by New Mexico's head coach, Richard Patino, is alongside Coach Patino. This is fun. Congratulations. Fourth consecutive double-digit Mountain West win. Way to go, Coach. Yeah, we just exploded in the second half. Um, we went on that little run there. We, they, they, they're a really good offensive team. Really, really tough to guard. We obviously were not guarding for the first couple possessions in the second half, but then we started to get stops, and then it allowed us to get on the break. We're pretty hard to stop when we're cooking like that. Um, great win. Not a lot of teams are coming in here and um, and doing that to this team. It's a lot of close games, so really proud of our guys. Yeah, Coach, I thought, you, you know, first of all, the the, load, the mani- uh, minutes you managed of the players, right, and the uh – especially in the first half, because I saw, I think, before the first four-minute timeout, you had JT back on the bench, and I was like, oh, maybe he's managed his minutes because he wasn't in foul trouble. Um, you know, talk a little bit about that. Was that I think something- they were fatigued because they were playing really hard. You know, that's what I noticed was that was a lot of subbing because of fatigue, okay. which is great uh, because I thought those guys were playing very hard. Obviously, JT playing 32 minutes, quiet, kind of 14 and 10, and five blocks was great. So uh, that's... What coaches love is to sub guys out when they're tired because they're going really hard. I know you knew you had a good freshman. Did you think you'd have a guy that was going to match the Lobo freshman record for double-doubles with seven and JT Toppin? I thought he was good. Everybody keeps asking me that. I really did think he was good. Now, this good, this productive, this early, no. And what he's been is, and freshman, it's really hard for freshmen. He's been very, very consistent. And that is very challenging for freshmen. So, um, overall, just... Really, really impressed with him. His attitude is great. He listens, he learns, and he really affects the game in a positive way. I saw so many things to like, and it was great to see Jamal Baker Jr. get back in the rotation, play almost 12 minutes, knock down a three. He made contributions. He he got your team out on the break, set somebody up for a layup. Uh, Really good to have him back in the rotation. Yeah, I mean, he's just got to get healthy, and um, he's had a couple days of practice that have been good, so he's just got to... We need to get his reps going. You know, it's so hard. He's been so inconsistent with being able to practice, not being able to practice. He's a good player. It's just he's had so many injuries in the past. So uh, we're going we're gonna to need him for that stretch run. Coach, I thought this game was all about the defense and containing Cardenas. Although he didn't have a lot of field goals, he had like nine assists. Um, I thought you guys did a great job defensively on him in the second half. Points in the paint you guys gave up. I guess were you guys getting extended guarding a three ball and those guys were getting yes, looks at the Yes, Exactly rim? right. We 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 were over helping 
one pass away and giving up some threes. We felt like with the lead, let's adjust a little bit, and we needed to be better at the rim. It, it, it's a good point, but we adjusted. We wanted to make them shoot twos, uh, not make a bunch of threes. They didn't shoot as many. They shot half the threes in the second half. Um, but they did had points in the paint. That's where it, I think they Exactly, they and that. did a great job, obviously, on uh, Gorner because I think he had 12 in the first half, shut him down. Amy's a really, really good yeah. player. Um, you know, so we thought they would score, and they did. I mean, our defense in the first half was terrific. Um, but, yeah, we, we tried to make a little adjustment, one by 20. So, yeah. you know, it wasn't perfect by any means. They were getting in the paint a lot more. You guys caught fire in the second half. You mentioned that, Coach. But they did make a little run, and they cut it to nine. And, and then you guys, it looked like it was the defense. That, that was the difference when you scored eight in a row to sort of put the game away. The thing that when we really get going is we turn teams over. Yeah. And um, Nelly got that steal. Oh, yeah. JB got that steal. So we do have to be able to get more stops when we don't, don't turn teams over. But we also got to embrace the fact that that's what we're pretty good at. Yeah. Mashburn Jr., really efficient shooting night. You said, I'm going to be patient with Mash. I know he's going to be fine, and he looked great tonight. Like you said, efficient. You know, 7 for 11. You don't need to shoot 20 shots. I didn't think any of his shots were bad. Rebounded the ball early really, really well. Um, I th it's a matter of time where those big three will start to gel together. Um, you know, people had been saying to me, oh, they can't play together, this and that, and I just ignored the noise. When those guys clicked, they're really good. I, I sat Donnie a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I was trying to get Baker going a little bit. Uh, but when the three of those guys are clicking, it's really special to see. And Donnie still ended up with 17 and 6. And I asked Hunter this. I want to ask you because there's so much tape of it now. Let's see. The Lobos are now... 20 games into the season and the the ball screens with Dan and Toppin in particular it's there's a ton of tape on it and it still is so difficult to defend and, and they went to it in the second half when you needed it why well first half we really pushed the pace and we were hard we were flying up the court we keep slowing down as the game gets a little bit tighter I want us to go faster um, but they were trying to switch every ball screen you know, because they didn't want to get two on the ball because Donovan's so lethal at it. But then we were able to get some good stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, when you have the personnel to do it and play like this, it's pretty fun to watch. It's pretty fun to watch four double-digit wins in a row in Mountain West play. It's been 12 years since that has happened. Uh, congratulations, Coach. Great win. We're Thank looking you. forward to Nevada on Absolutely. Sunday. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Coach. Lobo head coach Rich Petito, post-game courtside at the event center at San Jose State. Lobos 95, Spartans 75. Partner, let's put a ribbon on this one. What, what did you like most? I mean, the defense, really. I was impressed with, you know, they guarded Cardenas 94 feet. They took turns. House did it. Mash did it. Washington. I mean, these guys were all, they all bought in defensively. And then, of course, Nelly. How can we forget? He had three steals in the first half. And, that, and then, of course, that fourth steal he had in the second half was, I think, another key uh, moment in, in terms of, when the Lobos were able to go on a scoring run. Massively important. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was a Nelly steal. There was a house steal. Yeah. Uh, coach mentioned the Baker steal. Yep. Um, try the new Sonic cheeseburger lineup with two new juicy cheeseburgers, tangy hickory barbecue, and indulgent garlic butter bacon starting at three ninety nine for a limited time only at Sonic. All right, it's time for tonight's adjustment of the game. It's brought to you by The Joint, the official chiropractor of UNM Athletics. And I think our joint adjustment of the game is what you just said it's the the use of the entire backcourt on cardenas and the lobo's depth and the way that it was able to to just hound him he didn't score the ball the way he normally does he averages almost 14 a game yeah. he still set up his teammates yeah. um but if you're if you're going to take away him double digits you're going to take away gorner scoreless second half right. like these these things are huge yeah. and and new mexico Got it done defensively. Yeah, and that strategy and that adjustment in terms of taking away the three ball in the second half, it worked. I mean, they, they were able to, you know, set corner down. I mean, yeah, so, you know, that, that was, that was the, the adjustment in the second half. Yeah, and, and it was a big one because Gorner was coming off that career high. He had yeah. just scored 32 against uh, Fresno State, 12 points first half and zero in the second half. Okay, um, New Mexico continues its role you know what's coming up fans uh it, it's the game it's yeah. the the nine game losing streak against nevada nine or eight it's total of nine Ti okay eight 
with Coach Alford right. leading the team. Okay. Yep, Coach Alford is eight and zero against That's his old team. That's all we care team. about. Yeah, well, <laughs> That's all we care about is the, yeah. the ones we lost against Alford. Right? <laughs> we, we care about all nine of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. It's Sunday, and if you don't have your tickets, get them. The Lobos are twenty fifth in the nation. They've got Nevada at eight p.m. in the pit on Sunday night, the twenty eighth of January. We'll take the air at seven thirty with the Lobo basketball pregame show. Um, I cannot wait. Yeah. Hunter. Take your nap. Show up. Show out. Be loud. Yes. Be strong. Be proud. And uh, it's time. It's time for that nine-game skid uh, <laughs> against Nevada to come to an end. And you know, we've talked about it, how Coach Patino's a streak buster, right? The streak breaker. Let's let's just run it down quickly. Year one, as the head coach, UNLV had won seven in a row. Ended that streak. Year two, Colorado State and Boise State, four-game streaks against the Lobos. That ended. End of year two. Fresno State had won seven in a row. Coach Patino's Lobos took that streak down earlier this year. Utah State had won seven in a row. Yep. In year three, he ends that streak against the Aggies. So why not take care of the last one? Come it's on, the last one. Streak breaker. It's the last one. All right. <laughs> That'll do it for us. Thanks to Bob Walpole, our producer and engineer. Steve Kirkland, our SID for basketball, is the master of information. And uh, my partner is Hunter Green, a Lobo legend. I'm Robert Pornoy. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Uh, four straight in league by double figures. Hey. That doing work. Yeah. No, that that's building a resume. Is what they say. For March. Yep. Lobos by a final score of 95 to 75. Till Sunday night. That's it from the event center in San Jose. We'll talk to you from the pit when Alford and the Wolfpack come to town. This is Lobo Basketball on the UNM Sports Radio Network.